I met the skeezer Monday and he didn't pay his bill. Oh dear, Ron, Ron, Ron. Oh dear, Ron, Ron. Ron threatened him a bit and then his eyes stood still. I did do Ron, Ron. I did do Ron. Oh. He didn't pay his bill. Tut, tut. And so his eyes stood still. Then Ron caught his eye. It just popped out, Ron. It just popped out. Wherever you go, I'm gonna find you. Wherever you run, it will never be far enough. Wherever you hide, I'm gonna turn over that stone and watch you wriggle, you pus-filled little toad. <laughs> and when I do, I'm gonna circular saw the top of your head off <laughs> so I can see what's on your mind. <laughs> right, your turn. Wherever you go, I'm going to find you. Wherever you run, it will never be far enough. Wherever you hide, I'm going to turn over that stone and watch you wriggle, you pass filled little toad. <laughs> Mr. Rob? Right, we better check it then. Right. Check persuaders. Check persuaders. <laughs> check underpants. Check underpants. <laughs> Ron's body warmer. Check. <laughs> right, that seems to be everything. You take that lot out to the car, I'll get Ron. Right. Oh, by the way. Oh. 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 Don't forget to fall over on your way out. <laughs> By the time I finish with you, you'll end up with them hanging out of your mouth. <laughs> Very good. Now, revision of lesson eight. Violence and the lyrics of Jerry Lee Lewis. Right. Naomi, you shake my nerves. Uh, I rattle your brains. Too much love. Drives a man insane. You broke my wheel. Oh, what a thrill. Goodness His gracious. His balls are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> Bags are packed and ready to go. I'm standing here outside your door. Afraid to wake you up and say goodbye. Oh, the dawn is breaking. <laughs> so, how are the management students coming along, Ron? Have they grasped the rudimentaries? Yeah, we covered that one in yesterday's lesson. <laughs> Good. So they should be able to... Manage. ...while we're away. Right. Question time. BBC Topical Debate Show, hosted by Robin Day. Correct. Well, they seem to know what's what, Ron. Let's shoot. Anyone in particular? <laughs> Well, and as for you, you've become a right fat slob, haven't you? <laughs> and, you know, I should have you for a week. I'd soon have you on my special chicken pot noodle and donut diet. Keeps you regular. <laughs> Fly, get your hands out your pockets. Just do as I say. <laughs> he's a lovely boy, really, but at times he's a right bastard. <laughs> Of course, I couldn't leave him with Fred now, could I? I mean, he's been dead for six years. Five? <laughs> Will you shut up? Anyway, when the Divine Ecologist said the bed was free, I thought, Vicky, my girl, those tubes won't wait. Well, you see, I'm a martyr to me fallopians. <laughs> so it's a change of life. Do you know, I get more flushes than Madonna's B-Day. <laughs> sod for a couple of days. <laughs> I mean, it's not as if I'm having the full hysterical lectomy, is it? <laughs> now, you be good to your Uncle 
Uncle Ron or you Uncle Ron? Oh, I'll have your nuts for starters, as they say. <laughs> well, ta-ta, I've got to go now. And you? Get your hands out of your pockets, you dirty little bits. <laughs> <laughs> Mad old bitch. Mm. <laughs> Heart of gold, though. <laughs> Hello. My name's Fiona, little boy. Fiona? Yes, that's right. Would you like to buy a pair of crooks or Snickers? <laughs> Don't worry about Master Clive. He seems a very nice little boy. Yeah, well, any trouble you can reach us here. Oh. The Long Good Friday Caravan Park South End. <laughs> Fine. And uh, here's the. Uh, the pub. The Spondulix. The Mazuma. The Luca. The beer voucher. The blue folding stuff. The wedge. The wad. The wallet filler. The. the. Uh, the money. <laughs> Staff's wage is Oi. Don't forget to put them in the safe. Oh, certainly. And don't worry about Master Clive. <laughs> I'm rather looking forward to taking the little chap out. Well, what you and your missus do in your spare time is your business. <laughs> 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 yes. Uh, you would please to know that at this very moment, Master Clive is reenacting the Battle of Waterloo with my regiment of antique soldiers. You're late. That's another five as worth. Yeah. You're making the soup, little boys. <laughs> it's very good, Bond, you know. A little too much lead, maybe. <laughs> you beautiful mover. What's that? It's my Rosalita. The best little grinder in Cordoba. <laughs> now that's what I call a toy. <laughs> and John T took all his clothes off. And you'll never guess what he said. He said, look, look at me, everybody. everybody. I've taken all my clothes off. And it was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> then Giles poured a whole bottle of bubbly down his trousers. And he said, look at me, everybody. I've gone and poured a whole bottle of bubbly down my trousers. <laughs> and we just screamed. <laughs> Such <laughs> devastating wit. But then Giles always was extremely funny for a buck-toothed, chinless plonker. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> Anyone who pours good plonk on his plonker must be a plonk. <laughs> Couldn't have put it better myself, Mr. C. You know, Fiona, I don't know what could possibly interest you in Giles, the spineless onanist. Well, was he any relation to Sid, the spineless onanist? <gasps> Worked with him once on a variety bill at the Alhambra, Scunthorpe. Oh, marvellous act. He could nick your crisps from the third row back without even leaving the stage. Oh, he was a very gifted man. He could play snooker with his hands behind his head. Oh, he had a very large following. Oh, fascinating. Listen, did you hear that? What? Silence. Peace and quiet. The first time we've had any of that since Clive, the four-foot, four-inch fornicate, had descended upon us. <laughs> Do you know, he bought me a pizza surprise for lunch and I'd taken two mouthfuls before I realised it was a plateful of squashed hedgehogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he's a little treasure. And little treasures should be buried. And after their necks in the baking sand of the Sahara. <laughs> <laughs>
Peace flow, Ron. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Ron. <laughs> Countryside, eh? Lovely, innit, Ron? Yeah. Reminds me of a set of table mats I once had. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a go? Of course. You put your arms like this, and your left foot, and your right foot. What <laughs> I mean with that? I like mashing things up. Yeah. I had a brother once. <laughs> now he's a Cornish pasty. No, you cannot use this machine. It's very dangerous. Look, either you let me have a go with that machine, or I'll tell Uncles Ron and Ron you took me in the broom cupboard and introduced me to Mr Wobbly. <laughs> you evil. You evil can evil. You say I am very sexual burby cake. Their owns would never believe that I, Typhus Los Bentos, I'm a pig of Firefox. <laughs> Never! Never! On the other hand, perhaps you would like to have a go on the mixing machine. Typhus will teach these onions a lesson they will never forget. Ah, oh, the harmony of labor. Typhus and Master Clive. A madrigal of mind and muscle. A symphony of sweat and sinew. You want something? As understudy for our leading players, albeit temporarily in the management of this emporium, I am merely, as one would say, exercising my jurisdiction. Will you exercise him somewhere else? What's that? Oh, that! <laughs> For your information, my dear boy, is the staff's wages, or as Messieurs Rons would put it, <laughs> the Spondulix, the Mazuma, the Luca, the beer vouchers, the blue folding stuff. Please don't applaud, I have a gift for voices. <laughs> my impersonations are the toast of the West End. Have you seen my dicky Attenborough? See, there is no partition in the book. <laughs> yes, well, straight away I shall deposit this in the deposit safe. And you, my proud possessor of the hairy forearm, I trust you have compiled a suitable toothsome menu for this evening's clientele. Peas off. Are they? <laughs> well, they just have to have other vegetables, won't they? <laughs> Spondule. If they will have reached. 
not in all, not in here, with a hit. Are those two chefs' kettles ready for table five? They've been waiting 20 minutes. He's coming, he's coming. Santa Maria Martin, poor me Maradona, give me strength. Six chef specials and a corned beef surprise for table three. Hey, who do you think I am, eh? An octopus with seven pairs of arms? <laughs> gaucho, gaucho, tierra de fuego, down at the old bull and push. Tigers, can't you hurry it up a bit? Okay, 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 okay. All right. With chili sauce. <laughs> With chili sauce. Uh, listen, everyone, uh, I'm trying to determine the whereabouts of Master Clive. Has anyone seen him? No, not since he burst out of John Hurt's stomach. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Tigers? Look, Mr. Crustacean. Don't get crabby with me. Can't you see I'm up to my nostrils here? Oh, never mind, Typhus. You've got your wages to look forward to. It's payday today, isn't it, Mr. Crusty? Uh, yes, well, uh, I'll just go and see if the little fellow's in the office. <coughs> <coughs> oh, allow me. <coughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, that's not a fingernail. Oh, no. No, that's a plectrum. You see, we have an Argentinian chef who plays the guitar. Typhus! What exactly is this? It's ugly. He's a human fingernail. Yes. But whose human fingernail? Hmm? Hmm? Uno. Pejuno. Tolitron, you don't squeak sixty, seventy, eight, nine, ten. Well, he's not mine. Well, you should know who it is. Yes. It was in one of your meals. Yes. Hey, he's not good pointing the finger and at me. <laughs> not my fault. Little muchacho Master Clive was mincing up the meat last night. When? Mr. I'm in charge. You've certainly sorted everything out. Clive's gone and the money's gone. And you'll be gone when the Rons find out. So now what are you going to do, Mr. I had a walk-on part in Dixon of Doc Green? <laughs> I was thinking of ringing the police. <laughs> it was just thought. Oh, very nearly, yes. Begging oh. crust, dear. Oh, dearie, it's Vicky here. I've just come round for me operation. Do you know, one of my shoes was so inflamed, the surgeon took it out and used it as a bedside lamp. <laughs> Clive, all right? Course he is, bless him. Oh, and the divine ecologist, what a lovely man. He gave one look at me and it was clever at first sight. And fast, <laughs> I've never seen anyone work so fast. It was a prick in the arm, short back and sides, and me giblets had hit the kidney bowl before you could say, chucky chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, gotta go now. Pick Clavy up tomorrow. Ta -ta! Who was that? That was Auntie Vicky. Tomorrow she's picking up Master Clive. But his throat, I hope. <laughs> How are your fallopians? What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> hello, Mr. Ron. As things. Oh, fine. Oh, just, just fine. As the boy. Oh, he's going down very well with the customers. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet he is. <laughs> he bet she is. See you later, then. Bye. It's your fault for living near the mincer in the first place, you nincompoop of the first water. Hey, why you always blame me? I spit on your mother's brazier. 
Big fat curry ship's bottom. How dare you? How dare you, you llama loving layabout? My daddy's bigger than your dad. You haven't got a daddy. Well, if I had one, he would still be bigger than yours. Well, well, well. Domestic bliss. Don't it just bring a lump to your trousers? Throat. <laughs> oh, yeah, that as well, right now. Listen, you lot. I don't like moaners. I don't like leasers. <laughs> so, Krusty, where's our darling Clive? Yeah, we've got him a little present. It's a stick of rock with you horrible little sod written all the way through it. <laughs> oh, dear, Ron. Do you think Mr Krusty's lost his tongue? Oh, I think he might do. Where's Clive? Well, uh, he's, uh... Come on! Stop mincing about. Well, uh, <laughs> actually, he's, uh, prompt! Come here. He's here! He's here! Oh, Monsieur's <laughs> Ron, he's been, uh... I've been up west. He's been up west. I've been spending all these lovely people's wages that they so kindly donated to me. You did donate them to me, didn't you? What? <laughs> you bastard. I kill you, eh? I rip the wiring from your throat. Hello, Mr. Wobbly. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no>, little muchacho. <laughs> well, since you all seem to have got on so well with Clive, perhaps you'll come and visit us again soon. <laughs> what time is it, Mr. Wolf? <clears throat> it is Bebo's time. This is Bebo's <laughs> time. <laughs> Baste. The skirt, Clive. Yeah, it doesn't suit you. Well, girls, thanks for everything. Hey, are you going to give me a good night kiss? <laughs>